right, in this course example, we're going to be looking at a little bit of a review, but also some of our work energy power concepts. The first uh, part of this quiz was to just define velocity, and you should have said the rate of change of displacement. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. The question goes on to read a ball of mass 0.45 kilograms leaves the edge of a table with horizontal velocity v as shown in figure 2.1. They give you the height of the table and the distance that the ball travels horizontally before hitting the floor. They tell us that air resistance is negligible and we are to first calculate the horizontal velocity v as it leaves the table. All right, so. The way forward here is to, you know, one, maybe let's call this Vx, the x component of velocity, and recognize that there's an equation we've seen in the past that includes that range equals Vxt, where t is the total time airborne. For this problem, the time airborne is entirely dependent upon how high the table is, right? So we'll call this h, the height of the table. We can first calculate the time airborne by considering the equation h equals one half gt squared. That's kind of like our drop lab equation. If you recall that, um, let's see, displacement, let's say displacement equals ut plus one half at squared. That's one of our big four equations of motion. But if, if it's just sort of falling off the table, there's no initial velocity in the y direction. So that term goes away. We call the vertical displacement height. And then when the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, it's G. And so that's where we sort of get this equation from. So we can substitute in 1.25 meters for height uh, equals one half 9.81 for G and then solve for T. Once you do that, you should get T is about half a second, 0.5048 seconds, which we'll then plug in over here. So the X component of velocity, what they ask us to solve for is gonna be equal to the range 1.5 meters divided by the time 0 0.5048 seconds. And that gives us three meters per second. Which is what you get for your first answer. So three marks for that. The next thing is the velocity just as it hits the floor. So let's consider how we can calculate both the magnitude of that velocity vector and its direction. It hits the floor sort of at an angle like this. It has a sideways component that we've already calculated, three meters per second. And it's got a component going down. We can calculate that downward component as the square root of 2gh. Two different ways to think about that. One is with an energy argument, considering that all the potential energy possessed at the top of the table, it's MGH potential energy, became one half MV squared kinetic energy. Didn't matter that it was 0.45 kilograms of mass. If we solve this for velocity, we get root 2GH. Remember where this kinetic energy equation came from though. It came from that more general equation of motion. So again, we're dropping it off the table. That term goes away and we're just solving for the final velocity twice the acceleration is due to gravity and the vertical displacement. So we get the same sort of working, whether we think about it kinematically or with an energy argument. We can solve that that velocity in the y direction is 4.95 meters per second by just substituting in the 1.25 meter height and the 9.81 meters per second squared acceleration due to gravity. Once you've got two legs of a right triangle, you can use Pythagoras' theorem to solve for this one. And I think you get 5.8 when you do that. Let me just double check in the calculator. 4.95 squared plus nine. Yeah, 5.78 or you get 5.8. And then to get this angle here, you can use the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. 4.95 over 3 inverse tan, so you get 59 degrees for that one. Question goes on to ask for the kinetic energy just as it hits the floor. So remember that it was going 5.8 meters per second. 
we have one half mz squared. They tell you the mass was 0.45 kilograms and it was going 5.8 meters per second. Square that. We get 7.6 joules of kinetic energy. For the loss in gravitational potential energy, we're going to calculate it as mz. The mass is 0.45 kilograms. He is still 9.81 per kilogram, and the height is still 1.25 meters. That's the equation for kinetic energy. So this gives us oh, about 5.5 joules of potential energy. So we end up having 7.6 joules of kinetic energy, but only five and a half joules of potential energy, a loss in potential energy. And the last part of this asks us to explain why the kinetic energy of the ball does not equal the loss of gravitational potential energy. And that's because the ball has some initial kinetic energy because it was already rolling sideways with CV, what we call VF. You can actually account for that missing energy with a calculation of one half m dx squared. So not all of the sort of kinetic energy that it gains from this potential energy um, is here because it already had some kinetic energy to start it. And that's sort of the best answer for part C, but in your own words. This has been another work example with Dr. Schleif. We'll see.